Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome back to another modular patch from scratch video. So in the last modular patch from scratch video, uh, we made quite a complex um, patch with drums and bass line and, and ARP and lots of modulation, lots of movement. And I kind of joked towards the end of, uh, of that video that, oh, I've got patch cables left over and places left to patch left over. And this isn't a finished patch until every single patch cable is used. And which was kind of tongue in cheek, obviously, but I also think that's sometimes a bit of a trap that you can fall into with modular where uh, every patch that you make has to use everything. And, and I don't think that's always uh, necessarily a useful way to think about things. Uh, so um, I was daydreaming about a patch idea um, earlier today that I would like to try out. That's a, hopefully a little bit more focused inevitably by the end of the video i'll end up patching every single thing uh, because i am uh, only human um, but um the idea that i kind of had was um making use of stages especially with the alternate firmware that's on it to do a lot of the pitch sequencing to create these nice bleepy bloopy kind of sequences uh, that are probably a little bit cliche in the world of modular but they're cliche for a reason it's because they're kind of lovely uh, so that's what we're going to go for today something a little bit more mellow bleepy bloopy uh, and making use of stages to do our pitch sequencing and we'll talk about how we'll patch that up very shortly so i think we'll probably go with like just one or two voices and i think the first voice that we'll go with it will be really simple and we'll just use uh the 2hp vco um probably into a low pass gate and that can be basically the entirety of our voice so let's grab uh let's just try actually probably just a short one uh let's try a uh triangle wave into low pass gate and we'll take the output of the low pass gate and put it into x pan whether or not we make things um pan around or whatever you haven't quite decided yet but it just might be nice to be able to place voices in stereo and then uh, we'll need to patch the output of x pan into uh, something as well i guess we'll just go into probably just into the orcs of stomix and then if we let's just make sure that's all patched okay if we just temporarily just give that a, a gate from pam's Okay, great. That's all working as intended. Um, so, right, let's um, just for the moment, let's just open the CV on the low pass gate up using Atten so we can talk about the pitch. Wrong way around. I always patch it the wrong way around. There we go. Okay, so there is our oscillator so the idea that i had um for the pitch sequencing is that on the alternate firmware the orange segments on stages will um as well as being able to do sample and hold which is kind of one of their main reasons for existing uh, we can now also do sample and hold which is pitch quantized and we can set the pitch quantization just by holding down the button and sort of swooping through there and we can show that that's working uh, if we patch in a uh is that going to reach yeah actually that's a bit tight we'll use a slightly longer patch cable if we patch the output of this orange channel now into the volts per octave and we can move and we've selected a uh Tonic scale there, I think, and then there's a couple of other scales in here. So that's no scale. There's another scale there. But we'll go with the pentatonic because the nice thing with the pentatonic is that it's always going to sound pretty good. So um, obviously, we can just move it around using the slider here but if we feed a uh, level into the input of this segment say from a uh, LFO 
over here, perhaps. So patching the output of that segment into the input of this one. You can probably hear that there's uh, some um, possibility here down at the bottom that there's some pitch quantization going on there, but it's obviously a really, really long um, swoop there. Now what we could do is we could attenuate that signal. And I've got uh, one of these little friends here, which is just a flying attenuator, which would be good for, for showing that. This isn't what we're going to do ultimately as it happens. Um, but if we open that up, we have uh, attenuated that signal. And if we open it up more, we're going to get... Uh, bigger and bigger sweeps there. But one of the nice things that's in this alternate firmware is that if we set this orange segment into looping mode, uh, there we go. Um, this knob now acts as a attenuator rather than a slew time. And what that means is that between these two knobs, we can use the level to offset it. And we can use the knob at the top to make it a bigger range. Which gives us quite a performable set of tools because we can constrain what we're doing really easily. place in different parts of the range. But still have stuff that's always going to be in tune and working nicely. So that's really cool. Now, what we probably don't want to have here is this thing just sweeping up and down forever and ever, right? Uh, instead, we probably want to hold on pitches as we go. So for that, if we send a gate into this channel of stages, it will act as a proper sample and hold, and it will hold each time that it gets a, a gate. So let's... Um, Maybe channel one of PAMS. Okay, so we patch that in so it stopped moving altogether. And if we start PAMS, every time it hits that gate, it's going to choose a new um, pitch. Now, if we make the uh, gate pattern on PAMS a little more interesting, so if we, oh, if we come into channel one here, first things first, let's make it a bit faster. And if we change the rate of our LFO, because of the incoming voltage moving around faster or slower, we can get these different patterns. And so the relationship between the gates that are coming in, our offset and attenuation here, and the speed of the LFO now give us like infinite combinations of different patterns um, which are always in tune, always in time but we can be really performative about them and really quickly find new things and of course we could also change the shape of our LFO as well so it's now just descending or more slewed, um, skewed towards the top and bottom. And I think this is a really nice way to think about um, creating these patterns. But let's make the um, gate pattern on PAMS a little bit more interesting than that. So uh, maybe let's get some Euclidean stuff going on in there. So we'll come into the configuration for this channel. The quantize one, this isn't perfect, incidentally. Occasionally it'll throw something out, but it's it's good enough. Uh, so let's put like... Um, four into nine Euclidean pattern there. 
Monica and still... We've got this kind of performable patch here. Now we probably don't want uh, this open all the time now. Instead, we probably just want the gate from Pams that's changing the pitch to trigger the um, low pass gate. So every time a new pitch comes out, we get a new gate. Uh, so let's unpatch that and grab, um, where's that coming into it there? So probably a longer stack cable. So I'll grab this stack cable. Uh, oh no, well I want, want the gate. I just want to come out Pams. So the gate from Pams. That can come into our low pass gate. And we'll just make the um, width of the gate from Pans really tight so it does the nice low pass gate ping thing. So now we've got this really nice little voice where we can move its range around. offset it and as we move this range and offset around we still get the same um, uh, contour of pitches dun, 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 dun. so it's always the same contour of pitches and if we want to change the contour of the pitches we can change the speed of our LFO And I think that's a really lovely way to work um, because it's <laughs> it's the sort of thing that modular is really, really sort of suited towards doing. Okay, uh, let's take this patch a little bit further and do some more interesting stuff with it, shall we? So I think the first thing I want to do to take this patch a little bit further is actually just duplicate this entire thing for another voice. So maybe um, use uh, Beehive, which is the Platts clone, uh, to do a, a, a very similar uh trick um basically the same th thing but because we'll have different uh lfo speeds and different gate patterns the two will interact with each other and and be lovely i hope uh so um so we'll set that channel to be an lfo we'll set this one to be the looping um orange segment switch up to the um quantized mode uh then do 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 we'll take the level out of that into the false proactive on beehive we can t patch uh where are my smaller cables we can patch um that into the level as we had before and then we'll do the same thing, duplicating the gates, I think. So we'll have channel two be our gates. Uh, so that can both come up to ping our uh, low pass gate. And then uh, also, I swear I had some more small, I have to switch to a different color. Very, very triggering, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll have that also gate our sample and hold. Like that, and go in there. So it's basically duplicating that whole thing, except we haven't actually patched the output of uh, plats into the low pass gate yet. And we haven't patched the output of the low pass gate into, uh, we're going to XPAN again, just so that we've got Panning control, that's what pan one to the left a little bit, one to the right. Now we should now have two voices. Okay, uh, yeah, cool. So that's basically happening, but at the moment our gate on PAMS is a little bit boring. Uh, 
and we'll do the same thing of making that um, thinner. And give it like a Euclidean thing. Maybe a little bit too. Cool. Uh, let's make uh, this pattern a little bit more sparse. Okay, that's yeah, that's that's nice, isn't it? Um, so, um, given that that's sort of on the go there, what else uh, can we do? Okay, so I can't help but notice that our Fisio here has an FM input and that makes me want to fm things so let's grab um, yeah so let's just molt the output of beehive there and just shove it into the fm just for the moment just to see what that sounds like so listen okay that's a bit much so if we just listen to It's a bit much, but it's there's something that I like. So perhaps rather than having full on FM all the time, we could either attenuate it uh, or, or we could um, envelope it. Yeah, let's rather than go straight into the uh, FM input there, let's go via. Uh, a VCA, shall we? I'm going to need another stack cable for that, I think. We have a longer one, there we go. Uh, so, if we come with this stack cable, switch it out for a longer one. So what are we doing? Um, so that is the output of there. So if we send that into a VCA and then from the VCA go into the FM input instead, then that gives us a bit more control over how much FM is happening. We turn it up, then we get more, obviously. But perhaps we could, like, modulate that. thinking maybe like an envelope but I don't think I want it all the time so um, perhaps we just take a an LFO slow LFO on stages maybe one of the random LFOs instead in the alternate firmware uh, like that something yeah but slower now, of course, what I would say is that I could use a random LFO for the pitch as well. That might be fun, a little less controlled though. Uh, so we'll take the output of that 
a random LFO, go into that VCA, and because uh, these are two like a bit, both of these are like sequenced to a pentatonic scale, the relationships between the notes are always going to be fairly um, simple. So even when it, it hits hard, like that, it's still going to sound pretty, um, pretty chill, all things considered. delay so I've got this thing just sat on a delay for when I was playing before so if we could get everything into that and get some delay happening that might be a really nice thing uh, I am out of stack cables I might need to reconfigure some of this to allow me to do the delay uh, Oh, actually, no, because I'm. They're coming out of this, which is nearby, so I can just use shorter ones. This is about to get like a million times better when I add delay, obviously. So I'll just break that. I think I've got this set as um, wet only. Uh, output mode is one. Yes, that's wet only. Look at that. I knew that without looking at the manual. <laughs> uh, I'm learning distinct in you. I'm forcing myself to use different modes on it because I don't use other modes on it. So if I turn this level up, we should get C. Probably pan the main voices closer towards the center now. That's nice, right? Of course adding delay was going to make it better. Hmm. Do we want to add one more thing? Uh, I have an idea. It might not work, but let's, um, let's give it a try because we won't know if we don't give it a try. Okay, so hear me out. <laughs> um, what if we fed the output of one of our voices, possibly the aux output of Beehive, into rings? And I've got it on the um, alternate red mode, which is like strings with reverb. And that might sound really nice. And I could... Okay, so I'm not using the filter yet, so I could take like the output of the aux on Beehive into the filter, sweep the filter around. When it goes low, it won't, will basically not go into rings at all. Okay, well, let's just give it a go. Let's, um, so, uh, wait, guess. Uh, so aux out of Beehive into the input of the filter. Then from the band 
pass output. We'll try band pass. Might be better with a low pass. We'll try band pass. Uh, band pass into the input of rings. So I don't think we're going to pitch rings. I've just got it set at the bottom, which should put it in tune with everything else. Because I think everything's in C. So I'll just use rings straight up as a resonator. And then we'll take the output left and right, or odd and even as it were. In reverb mode this uh, gives us stereo, so it should give us some more width to the sound as well. in the middle somewhere. Let's see what we can hear. Let's just turn down our main source for a second. So we just got the delay there. rings being rings or oh, calm down rings so we're just kind of using it as a There's a reverb, really, but with like... <laughs> okay, let's modulate that then. Uh, oh, it's a dangerous, dangerous rings, isn't it? It's the thing with rings. It's always got... It's always on the edge of going mad, isn't it? We need to modulate some stuff, right? Okay, uh, okay, what have we got that we can modulate stuff with? So we're pretty much out of stages other than one there. Which I might save in case I need like an envelope or something. Uh, so we can just start taking some random stuff from Pams, maybe. Uh, yeah, so let's maybe move over to channel 3. Set it going really slowly. And a triangle wave. And we'll patch that into that position. Just there. Turn it any further. Thank you. 
I think the thing is I don't want this happening like all the excuse me all the time so maybe we um, modulate the cutoff of the filter so it only just ca catches it now and again uh, so I guess we'll use pams for that as well we come to four maybe use the smooth random out there okay we'll need a long cable for that I think uh, into the CV input there fast perhaps we also need um, perhaps we just need that not happening all the time as well uh, oh so I recently got one of these, which is a low pass gate that you can just sort of hang off the edge of your, uh, your setup. Uh, so we could, instead of having the orcs go straight into the filter there, we could have it go into the low pass gate, uh, have the, go into the input of this, like that. And then we can ping it with like another slow pattern on PAMS perhaps. So we'll go over to five. Uh, we'll just, I'll just set it as a gate pattern just to make sure everything's working first. That's like a tone control there. So it loses a bit more volume than the, the, the tacarb, but it might be okay. Should we just turn this up? Uh, so let's give that a more interesting pattern. Oh, interesting. That's now because it's hard edge triggering rings as well. Maybe we just set the random skip up. Uh, bloops in there.
yeah, just some perfectly pleasant bleeps and bloops. With a little bit of menace from from rings there. If we want to, as I say, if we want to move that most melodies around, we can cool. Okay. Okay. One more thing just to make this a little bit more um, performable, I think. So at the moment it's um, pretty straightforward for us to give ourselves changes to the melody and the sort of the contour of the melody. But um, it's not uh, so easy for us to change on the fly the rhythms so much. Um, and also, I want to move that to that side of that cable because that was doing my head in. Um, so let's just make it so that we have a bit more hands on control, maybe these two sliders we can use to help us change the uh, rhythm a little bit. Uh, and probably the way to do that is to either mess with the steps or the random skip on those first two channels of PAMs, I guess. Uh, let's try the steps in the Euclid. So just coming back onto channel one there, uh, what I will do is come into the menu and come across to the E trig parameter, which is currently set at four. So what's my step set at nine? Okay. Um, so if I come in to edit this here and rather than have it set at four, if I go all the way back, I can probably set it to CV. Yes. Okay. CV one. Uh, okay. And offset of zero. And we'll set the attenuation in a second. So if I patch, uh, the output of this channel of Aten into here. Just come on to this channel here. I should see the value go up and down. Does that just go between zero and the maximum for the Euclid? I don't know. Let's find out, shall we? So, okay, so that's currently everything. If I go down to zero, it puts it on all of them, which is a bit annoying. But I guess I can live with that. Okay, and then we can do the same thing with um, the other channel then, I guess. And then we have like these hands on controls for how much each of the voices are firing. So we can come out of the CV setup there, come out of channel one into channel two. Uh, e trigger is exactly where we want to be. Come in here and set that to CV two. Now that I have control over that, I always want to make it
So we go, we have control over how much how much each of those channels are firing. We have control over the offset. just here. So that is nice, I think. That's that's probably the patch. We have rings picking up occasional pings of what's going on on Beehive. So it's always nice and controlled. We could probably get things a bit more modulating. But I think for the sake of brevity. We're probably about there. I always have control of the tape here. I think that's a rather pleasant little patch. It's one of those patches that you kind of set up and then you just kind of leave it going, don't you? Oh, go on, let's just... <laughs> let's make the voices plan about. Uh, I wasn't going to, uh, but I can't... I can't help myself, can I? Clearly. Uh, where are we going? Uh, when I come out of there, uh, we'll just have a seven and eight set up a smooth, random moving, real slow. like at the full level either. I hope that was interesting, uh, or relaxing at the very least. Um, and uh, let me know in the comments if there are particular types of patches you'd like to try, you'd like me to try and tackle. Um, happy to take a look at uh, any suggestions. But otherwise, I think until next time, thank you so much for joining me. Take care.